Okay, be sure to tell me when we're live, all right? I hate to be on here broadcasting and not know it. <gasps> oh no, hi friends. I didn't see you there. Just kidding, of course I did because it is Friday. It is 4 p.m. Eastern time and it is time to trivia. I'm your host with the most, Timothy Dunn, and maybe you notice a Twitter handle on the screen. Hey, that's my Twitter handle. And after the game, if you want, hop over to Twitter and come say hi. We talk about the game, we talk about who got stumped by what. It's like a whole community experience situation, you know? And just in case you accidentally stumbled upon us today, this is One to Win Trivia, and I am so glad to be with you today. Today, February, just kidding, January 28th, 2022, and today, is a very special day because today is Sarah McLaughlin's birthday. Adi, I do believe I fail you. Sweet surrender. Uh, I will remember you. Oh, oh, Sarah McLaughlin fan. She is 54 years old today. And man, was Mirrorball a big album in my life or what? Oh, also, in the arms of the angel. <laughs> From those ASPCA commercials. Or whatever, you know. Just in case you don't feel like celebrating Sarah McLaughlin today, you can celebrate with confidence because today is fellow game show host and the least sexy in sync member, Joey Fatone's 45th birthday. Er, er. Happy birthday, Joey Fatone. And another artist that's right on par with Joey Fatone. It's also Jackson Pollock's birthday today, so it's a big day. It's a big day for artists of all kinds. A birthday day. And what do artists need the most? Money. So let's go ahead and play for a prize but a 50 dang dollars today. And let's split that three ways, 25 bucks to our first place winner, $15 to our second place winner, and 10 smackaroos for the bronze medal. And you know what? If you want to support those artists, you can go donate your winnings to the ASPCA today. I saw that they raised $30 million because of her campaign on ASPCA. Or you can buy a Jackson Pollock print if you want. Or you can just Venmo your winnings to me and I'll make sure Joey Fatone gets it. Wink. There you go. So you have lots of options today. You come out at night. That's when the energy comes and the dark side's light. And the vampires roll. Okay, enough Sarah McLaughlin. But here's how we play one to win trivia. In just a second, I'm going to be asking you 12 general knowledge trivia questions, and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to tap on the answer that you think is correct. If you tap wrong, no big deal. You can change your answer within the 10 second window we give you. The more questions you get right, and the faster you do it, the closer you will be to winning our top prize. And remember, in this game, there is no elimination. And there's no penalty for guessing either. So if you get a question wrong or you change your mind, like, who cares? No big deal. Keep going. Keep playing. Time is of the essence here because prizes are awarded to the players who get the most questions right in the least amount of time. That makes, makes sense, right? You live in a church where you sleep with voodoo dolls and you won't give up the search for the ghosts in the hall. Oh, Sarah McLaughlin gets me. Okay, it's time to play. So let's all take a big deep breath. Let's focus, go with your gut, change your answer in the 10 second window if you change your mind and who knows? Maybe you'll be our, our big winner today, our top scorer. You know, if you're ready to play, if you are ready to play, go ahead and type, it's gonna be me into the chat today because you are gonna be the winner. Let's get those good vibes going. Yeah, you're working, building a mystery. I want to see some, let's, it's going to be me. I got to see some, it's going to be me. So I'm going to keep singing Sarah McLaughlin all day. Building a mystery. There we go. I see some, it's going to be me. We have a really fun game for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are a record label executive, I'm available and ready to record a Sarah McLaughlin covers album. I'm already off book. I'm ready today. I'm ready to go today. And just look at that. Will you look at that? Oh, look at the time. It's time for question one. Here we go. Good luck, friends. Question one. Here we go. Question one. Which month has the fewest days? Is it February, April, or December? Tap on the answer that you think is correct. That's the time. You ever heard of the calendar? You ever heard of months of the year, anybody? Is that something you're new with? Okay. Well, uh, the... Famous little saying goes, 30 days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31. That includes December. 
except for February. She's a weird little month who has like 28 days and stuff. So February is the answer we were looking for. Congratulations to all 86 one two winners. I love that you knew that. Okay, let's move on to Q2, Q2. Which of these planets is not part of the solar system? Is it Mars, Mercury, or Proxima Centauri B? Not part of our solar system. Here's a little space question for you, because knowledge never truly takes up space. Oh, the jokes are already starting. Oh, I can hear the, the uproarious applause from behind your screens. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The solar system, okay, is, well, you know, it contains the sun and everything that orbits around the sun. And that is where we are right now unless um, you're playing from outer space. And if you are playing from outer space, go ahead and let me know in the chat because I'm looking to get out of this planet. You know what I mean? Anyway, if you recognize two of these planets' names, it's because they're relatively close to us compared to the other one, Mars and Mercury. Proxima Centauri B is what is known as an exoplanet, or in other words, a planet outside the solar system. And that is our correct answer for Q2. 86 Wonder Winners, got that one right? Someone guess Mars. And that's okay if you guessed it, but you're wrong. <laughs> and guess what? The good news is you get to keep playing. So let's move on to Q3. Q3. Which treaty was signed at the end of World War I? Was it the Treaty of Rome, Treaty of Tordesillas, or Treaty of Versailles? End of World War I. That's time right there. Picture it. The year was 1918, and war was happening. One of the biggest wars in history. In fact, back in the day, they didn't even anticipate there would be another war of this scale. So they just called it the Great War. Ah, uh, hindsight is 2020. Well, 2022, I guess, actually. Anyway, back in mid-1919, one of these treaties was signed, and it's considered to be one of the most important treaties that ended World War I. I was there. I was singing Sarah McLaughlin songs to support the troops. No, uh, and it was not the Treaty of Tordesillas. That was signed in 1498, nor was it the Treaty of Rome. It was actually the Treaty of Versailles. Congratulations to all 83 one to winners who found peace on this question. The rest of the five of you who got that one wrong are at war with one to win. But we call a truce and we're back to being friends already. War is over if you want it, as someone said once. Okay, let's move on to Q4. Q4, what did Darth Vader famously say to Luke Skywalker? Was it, Luke, I am your father? No, I am your father? Or, I killed your father? Mm -hmm. We're gonna get some eyebrows raised on this one, you big Star Wars fan babes. Did we spoil it for you? Uh, sorry, come on. It's been 30 years. You've had 30 years to watch the film. So we're asking about one of the most famous movie quotes of all time. And it is also one of the most misquoted ones of all time. Rumor has it that this dramatic reveal from The Empire Strikes Back used to be written into the script as, I killed your father, so that not even the cast would know. But that's not the phrase that Darth Vader ultimately said. And nope, neither was it. Luke, I am your father, either. Did you fall for that one? Oh, it's our old friend, the Mandela effect, babies. The correct quote, despite what you may remember, is actually, no, I am your father. Um, let's see how we did. 61 to winners got that right. Good for you. 27 guessed, Luke, I am your father. And I ain't mad about that. I would have guessed that too, probably. I would have thought it was a trick, so I, I probably would have guessed one of the other ones. But congratulations to all 60 if you got that one right. Let's move on to Q5. Q5. In email, what does the B in BCC stand for? Bare, basic, blind. Tap on one on your screen and let's keep the showboat on the road boat. All right. Now, have you ever used email before? Okay, great. Uh, for some, but for those of you who don't have a positive outlook on this question, Another joke. I'm going to hold for applause right here. Let me explain something to you real quick. When you send out an email to someone, you can actually send it to several people at the same time. You can either add multiple recipients or you can add them to the CC field, which stands for carbon copy. Uh, there's practically no difference between them. But the BCC field allows you to send a copy to someone without 
the rest of the recipients actually knowing. So it only makes sense that B in BCC would stand for blind. The term was actually coined way before email was a thing, but these days you'll most likely see it in your Yahoo mail. Is Yahoo still a thing? Do you use Yahoo? I think I have an old Yahoo kicking around somewhere. 75 Wonder Winners got that one correct. One of you thought it was Bayer. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to Q6. Q6. Which of these Radiohead albums contained the song Creep? Go ahead and tap on the album that contained the song Creep. There we go right there. One of my favorite picture questions is back. Now, Creep is one of Radiohead's most popular and famous songs. And man, are they fed up with it. They haven't played it live in over 12 years. And actually, here's a little fun fact. The two brief guitar noises you hear right before the chorus, that da -da, da -da, were actually an attempt to ruin the song by the guitarist Johnny Greenwood, who truly despised the song from day zero. That didn't work out. Anyway, the song first debuted in 1992 as a single, and in 1993, it would go on to appear on their first album, Pablo Honey, which is this one right here. And on Q6, our image question, we've got 41 Wonder Winners who put everything in its right place. No, wait, that's from another album. Okay, moving on. Let's keep talking music, though, because I'm feeling musical today. Could you tell? Q7. Which of these music genres does not typically use a 3-4 time signature? Minuet, polka, or waltz? Which does not use a 3-4 time signature typically? That's time right there. Any music theory nerds out there? Now, I did my share of music, the uh, music theory in my life. And in music, the time signature is the convention that measures how many beats or pulses are in each measure. You know, the most common signature you'll see is 4-4 four, four time, which is used in pretty much all of rock, funk, blues, pop. But 3-4 time isn't exactly a rarity, let me tell you. Some super famous songs like Everybody Hurts, Everybody Cries, uh, you know that song. And um, uh, Sing Us a Song, You're the Piano Man. Those are all in 3-4 time, which is known as waltz time. So that rules waltz right out of there. And while we're at it, let's also rule out the French dance and musical style minuet, which is also usually in 3-4 time. Polka is our right answer, which almost always has a 2-4 signature. And 55 wonder winners are oompa, 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 their way to the next question without missing a beat. Let's see how we did. We had 25 guess minuet. We had nine guess waltz. 55, got it right on the money. Let's go do some polka dancing. Have you ever danced a polka? It's actually really fun. It's like corny, but it's fun. Let's go polka dancing in 2022 more. And that's what I say. Let's move on to Q8. Q8, here we go. Q8, which of these songs was not written for a film? Lose Yourself by Eminem, My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion, or Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor? Not written for a film. Now, three music questions back to back. Can you believe it? What is this, like a musical tri trivia show? What are you, like a singing for your... Are you trying to get a job on American Idol, Tim? No, okay. This is the last one, okay, I promise. Anyway, two of these more than famous songs were written and composed specifically for films. You most likely know that My Heart Will Go On was most definitely written for the film Titanic. I mean, it's practically instantly recognizable. I saw it in the theater. What you might not know, or maybe you do, a lot of you are really smart, you know, you're clever, you're trivia, folks, is that Eminem's Lose Yourself was also produced for a film, the 2002 musical drama Eight Mile, which leaves Sinead O'Connor's rendition of Nothing Compares to You as the correct answer for our last musical question of the day. 58 Wonder Winners got that one right. Fun fact, whenever I hear the song Nothing Compares to You, this is kind of disrespectful to her maybe a little bit, but SNL did a parody version called Nothing Compares to Hair. Has Sinead O'Connor shaved her head? I don't know why I always think of that, but you know, if Sinead O'Connor is playing, I love you. Nothing compares to hair. Is that something that anyone else thinks about or is my brain broken? <laughs> Let's move on to Q9. Q9. Which country's people do not celebrate Valentine's Day in February? Brazil, India, Sweden. 
Valentine's Day, not in Feb. There we go. Now, throughout history, uh, for many, many years, Valentine's Day has been celebrated in plenty of countries all around the world. While it's not officially recognized as a public holiday anywhere, in just a couple of weeks, you'll be seeing lots of lovey-dovey icons and symbols all over the dang place. Unless you're from one of these countries, that is. As of the 1960s, Sweden's country folk have been celebrating Valentine's Day every 14th of February, much like the rest of the world. And in India, despite many critics, it's been, quote, it's been becoming quite popular to celebrate it on the 14th as well. In Brazil, though, well, that's a totally different story. It's not even called Valentine's Day, but it's called Dia dos Namorados. And they celebrate it in June. So Brazil is the correct answer we're looking for right there. 35 one winners guess India, 21 guess Sweden, 31 of you stuck it in there and got it correct. We lost two thirds of you. Some might argue that that question was approaching savage, but I'm not gonna say that because we're gonna move on to Q10. Q10, where in the world is it a custom to pretend to spit on the bride at weddings? Austria, Greece, or Romania? Where is it a custom to pretend to spit on the bride? Now listen, here's another question about love and the weird, weird things that people do for love. And listen, my friends, people can get very weird. An incredibly old and bizarre tradition says that to protect the new couple from evil spirits and as a charm of good luck, guests will pretend to spit on the bride and even the groom as they walk down the aisle. All right. Well, you do you, but no one be spitting on me, okay? Uh, or each other. We'll do whatever you want. Anyway, it ain't in Austria where they do this, nor is it in Romania. They prefer to pretend to kidnap the bride. The correct answer for this lovely question is Greece. 58 one the winners knew that one. And let's all make a pact, all 103 of us playing and me. So 104, and Jesus, so 105 of us. Let's not spit on anybody anymore. Just like blanket statement, I don't care if it's a wedding, I don't care if you're pretending, I don't care if it's like a real housewives bar fight. Let's leave that in the past, okay? No more spitting on people. And this has been a PSA from me. And now we move on to Q11. Q11, can you believe we're almost at Q11 already? Which of the following American TV shows is not based on a foreign show with the same concept. Project Runway, Shark Tank, or Survivor? Mm, here's another tricky one from our good friend Abhai who submitted the question just a couple weeks ago. And folks, if you wanna submit your own questions for the game, feel freest to slide into one to wins DMs or leave your suggestions at the survey at the end of the game. Don't send them to me. I don't know anything about questions or answers, and I have famously never won a trivia game in my life. I'm good at Wordle, though. Anyway, two of these rather popular game shows from the U.S. aren't actually original concepts, but rather national adaptations of game shows from other countries. For example, Survivor is actually the American version of a practical worldwide franchise developed in Britain in 1992 and first broadcast in Sweden in 1997. So that ain't it. Nor is it Shark Tank, the ruthless reality show which entertainers and entrepreneurs sell their souls to get some venture capital for their companies. The one that came out in Japan. But Project Runway, now that's the show that debuted in the US and therefore our correct answer. Also, the host of Project Runway is my arch nemesis, Tim Gunn, because when the show first came out, my name is Tim Dunn, and his name is Tim Gunn. So, I mean, it's a little too close, but let's see how I did. 34 one to winners got that one correct. We lost 26. Hey, hey everybody, I think we're having some sync problems right now. So let's go ahead and refresh your windows. Is that a thing I can tell you to do? So go ahead and hit refresh and we'll be waiting for you here. In the meantime, I'll be singing the rest of Sarah McLaughlin's songbook for you. Eddie, I do believe I failed you. <laughs> I actually can sing okay. You wouldn't know it from this, but I'm a, I'm a gunslinger at karaoke. Now, if you are a Sarah McLaughlin fan, let's hear your, if you, or if you have requests. If you have karaoke requests for me, 
Let me know in the chat and maybe I'll sing your favorite song. Are we good to go? Everyone good to keep going? Let's keep going. Here we go. Q12, our final Q of the do. Let's put our thinking caps on and focus because it's our final question. Q12. How many kittens did Coco the gorilla have in her lifetime? One, four, or five? How many kittens did Coco the gorilla have in her lifetime? That's time right there. Now wrapping up today's game show about a neat, with a neat little question about animals. Coco the gorilla has actually a really interesting story. She was initially cared for by researchers from Stanford University who went to teach her over a thousand words in gorilla sign language. Isn't that wild that that's even a thing? Oh man, I remember all this. Even wilder, apparently she actually asked for a cat for Christmas back in 1983, and they would eventually make her dream come true by letting her choose and adopt a kitten. And she didn't only adopt one. On two more occasions, she was allowed to adopt two more kittens each time, which makes her grand total of Cinco Gatos. We have 25 Wonder Winners who got that right. 33 guessed four and 27 guessed one. We lost a bunch of you. How you feeling, everybody? That's 12 questions. Do we feel good? Let's, all right, now's the time when I ask you to really be honest, look deep within, and type in the chat what place you think you came in today. There are 105 Wonder Winners playing. Let's see. Type in, if you think maybe you came in first, someone's got to say number one. Let's see number one. Any number ones here? Or number five? Anyone? Oh, I see uh, 47. Number five! Owl, I love your uh, optimism. Angie said 47. Let's see, PJ, 49. Rose, 30. Anna's just an upside down smiley face. That doesn't look good. But you know what? Let's cut to the chase and go ahead and see who wins it today. Today's winners are... Owl! Oh my gosh, Owl, you guessed number five and you're number one. Congratulations, Owl, with 11 correct answers and 32.39 seconds. Mrs. 12 with, with 11 correct answers in 33.41 seconds. And Fragli with 11 correct answers in 52.78 seconds takes home the bronze and 10 smackaroos. And that's it, friends. That's one to win. Congrats to all of our winners. And if you didn't snag any prizes today, I have some great news to you. I'm singing all of Sarah McLaughlin's hits every Friday. Just kidding. We're playing every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So go ahead and sign up for text alerts and I'll see you right back here next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, if you had fun today, and I sure hope you did, if you smiled, if you laughed, if you got any joy from this, I challenge you to go do something nice for someone else in your life because joy is not meant to be kept. Joy is meant to be shared. I've been Timothy Dunn this entire time. Thank you so much for playing. If no one else has told you this yet today, I love you. I'll see you all over on Twitter or in my sweet, sweet dreams. Have a great weekend, everybody. You'll see you next time. Bye.